गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट क्लास वी कंप्लीटेड द लेसन दैट इज द नंबर सिस्टम सो इन दैट एक्सरसाइज 1.4 आई लेफ्ट आई विल एक्सप्लेन दैट वन वंस योर रेगुलर क्लास स्टार्ट्स ओके नाउ कम टू द सेकंड चैप्टर दैट इज देयर इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ योर टेक्स्ट बुक दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू यूक्लिड्स ज्योमेट्री नाउ व्हेन यू कम टू द ज्योमेट्री in your mind what you will get see the word uh, geometry uh, comes from the greek word that is geo which means earth and metre or metron means measure it is believed or uh, geometry gets originated to have uh, in order to measure the land this branch of mathematics geometry Was studied in uh, various ancient civilization in a different way. The various uh, civilization that is you studied in your uh, social Egypt, Babylonia, China, India, Incas, etc. The people of this civilization uh, faced uh, several practical problems in order to measure the land and all. so as the result of that this development of geometry came into existence now when you come to your lesson who is called as father of geometry as you know euclid is called as father of geometry why means he had given me various axioms and various postulates so that we use in order to solve some practical problems that we face in geometry and in order to prove the theorems and all all right and now here in the lesson beginning two three pages they had given you an introduction about the uh, geometry so that you read repeatedly you will come to know uh, how it came into existence and uh, the various uh, mathematicians that they worked in this field Now, when you come to the Euclidean geometry, mainly you have to know axioms and postulates. These axioms and postulates are nothing but they are universally truth statements, which can be accepted without any proof or construction. Such as statements are called as axioms and proof. They don't need, uh, sorry, axioms and postulates. They don't don't need any proof. For example, in the page number. Thirty, you have some Euclidean uh, definitions uh, for straight line, point, okay, line, surface, plane surface, edges, and all. So those points are key words for you in order to understand your geometry. Okay, a point is the one which has no breadth. A line is a breadthless length. The ends of line or points. a straight line which lies evenly with the points on its side so all the points will lie evenly a surface is that which has uh, a length and breadth only a surface is one which has length and breadth only the edges of surface are lines the plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with the straight lines on its side so coming back to the next part uh, that is axioms as i told you axioms are the special statements so they don't need require uh, they don't need proof they are accepted universally some examples for that or else axioms are uh, what are axioms and give examples are state some axioms they may ask you so in such a case you have to write this in the page number 31 things which are equal to same thing are equal to one another if equals are added to uh, equals the holes are equal if equals are subtracted from a whole okay if equals are subtracted uh, from equals the remainders are equal things which coincide with one another are equal to one another next the whole is greater than a part imagine this is a whole when you cut into part so if you take it out 
naturally, all become greater than part. Things which are halves of the same thing are equal to one another. Okay, things which are halves of the same thing, and you divide into uh, two part. So exactly, then uh, the same things are equal to one another. Things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. So things which are uh, equal to double of one another, the whole are equal. Or else they are equal to one another. So these are some of the axioms. Okay, so. Try to uh, write all these axioms uh, I had given in the notes and uh, recollect in your mind when you are seated freely. Axiom one, axiom two, like that. You keep remember. It will be useful in order to do the theorems. So next comes postulates. So these are also uh, these are also called as Euclidean postulates, and uh, we are going to use these also. In proving the theorems and solving the sums. Now, uh, there are five Euclidean postulates. What are those? Means first one: a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. Can I imagine the two points? Like this, or like this. Okay. A straight line may be drawn from any one point to another point. Next, given two distinct points, there is a unique line that passes through them. So, unique line can pass through a two distinct point. So these are important in order to solve the exercise sums. Remember all this properly. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely. So you can see the figure that is given there. A terminated line can be extended indefinitely if you have the space to extend. Okay, then. The third postulate is that a circle can be uh, drawn with any center and any radius. A circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. See, keeping this as the center also, you can draw the circle. Keeping here the center also, you can draw the circle. And you can draw with the same center, bigger circle also. As a result of that. Okay, a circle can be drawn with any center and uh, any radius. All right angles are equal to one another. All right angles are equal to one another. So, all the right angles means right angles means ninety degree. All the right angles are equal to one another. Next, fifth one. If a straight line falling on two distinct straight lines equals to, sorry, makes the Interior angles on the same side are, if it is taken together, less than two right angles. Then the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on side on which the sum of the angles is less than two angles. You can observe the figure that is there in the page number thirty-three. So where the P and Q, the interior angle one and two, you can see, right? So that will be less than ninety degree. And if and only if it is less than ninety degree, so if you extend those, they are else if you produce those lines, they will meet at one point. So that is the meaning of fifth postulate. So there are five postulates that you have to remember along with your axioms. So next some proofs were the proofs are given, and one theorem statement is that two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common. Two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common, so they can have only one point. You keep it in your mind. Now coming to this exercise, exercise two point one. So exercise two point one will say. What is that? Only one line can pass through a single point. Whether it is true or false, if it is false, or else true also, we have to give reason. Uh, only one line can pass through a single point. Only one line uh, through a single point? No, it 
is possible to only single line can cross through a single point is a question false reason is that through a point we can draw infinite number of lines right first one is what false second one there are an infinite number of lines which pass through two distinct point so through distinct point it as i told you earlier it is possible to draw only one line here see cannot able to draw through the same point that line right through the two distinct point it is possible to draw only one line your question is that uh, there are an infinite number of lines which passes through two distinct point is the question so as a result of that it is false on the one line now okay. when you come to the next question that is a terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both the sides yes it is true as i told you imagine this is a terminated point and the points are a and b is can be produced to indefinite line all right next one two circles are equal then the radii are equal when and only when we will say two circles are equal if they are having same radii okay as a result of that this is also true in the figure number 5 if ab is equal to pq pq is equal to xy then ab is equal to xy question is that uh, the three different lines is given so ab is equal to pq but pq is equal to what it is equal to xy so instead of pq we can write xy hence it is true now the next question is the second question that i will give as h of a and the third question onwards i will see in the next class so here in the introduction part you have more explanation about geometry and the key words and the points axioms and postulates okay so remember and write and practice all this which will help you for the next class as well as your higher class also okay all the best to you we will see the remaining in the next class thank you